Today we're going to be reassembling the engine, hopefully for the last time, and making a few other changes to hopefully get a little bit more power or reliability, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be reassembling the engine, as I said. If you aren't familiar with the backstory on this engine, let me give a quick update on it. So I bought this engine fully dressed with all these components on here back in 2020. We slapped it in the car and went racing with it. It lasted uh, a year until we blew the head gasket on it, which was probably due to my fault. But we sent it off to the machine shop to get it a uh, board 30 over and it has new pistons in it. It has the stock crank and rods in it because we're not going for any kind of high horsepower build and I didn't really want to spend the money on doing a stroker build at this point. I already am probably about forty-five to five thousand dollars into this engine and couldn't justify another two grand basically to do a stroker kit in it. So for right now this is uh, it's just going to be a 306 build. We're going to be putting the same components back onto it, which are also not really suited or sized correctly for a larger displacement engine. They're pretty much sized for the 302, 306 uh, size. So that's why that was one reason that I stuck with just doing a 30 over and doing a 306. Uh, a quick Summary, if you guys haven't seen the other videos on what is actually components are going on this engine. So it has a uh, Anderson N41, I believe, cam in it. It has that Trick Flow 11R 175cc heads, and it has a Holly System Max upper intake. So with all those components, I'm thinking it should be in the, the low 300 range. So I was planning on getting a dyno tune. Some things just didn't line up and I ended up just running it on the tune that I was given from the guy, which was an unknown tune to me. And that's probably one of the things that led to the head gasket failure of me not really knowing what the tune was tuned for and things like that. So going forward, we are going to remedy all that hopefully, and we are going to get this engine actually dyno tuned so it is performing at its best, which is hopefully going to be, you know, it would be awesome to get like 330 horsepower out of it, um, but we will see what we can do. But I need to get this engine all reassembled. I am going to be doing a few tweaks uh, here and there. So I want to put uh, a baffle system into the stock oil pan. So just weld in some plates in there to help uh, oil slosh. And then I want to change the ignition system from a distributor system to a distributed list system. Uh, that was, was the plan to do last off season, last winter, but I just did not get it completed in time and I had to fall back on using a distributor. But that is the plan this off season, hopefully, is to get that uh, reinstalled. So I'll kind of go over probably in a future video of all those changes that I'm doing. But for this video, we're just gonna get everything uh, reassembled on the engine and get it ready for to go into the car. And as far as the engine that's in the car, uh, it's running great, but it is just a GT40P head Explorer intake uh, E-cam engine. So it's lower horsepower. It's been dynoed and it's only putting out like 240 horsepower. So this one will hopefully add, you know, maybe 80 to 100 horsepower would be ideal. Uh, so hopefully this one will produce a lot more that's than what is in the car, but yeah, the one in the car is coming out, hopefully to be sold off and we can then put that money back kind of the, virtually the idea was to help pay for this one. But, uh, at this point we'll just take that money, put it in the bank or put it back into the car. All right. So with that, we're going to get this engine kind of 
cleaned up, I'm gonna go and tap all the holes to make sure that they're all clean and ready. Uh, you can see that I painted the engine a nice uh, Ford blue. I really like it. Uh, a quick tip, which it looks like I left one of these in here, but these uh, little silicone plugs are awesome. I highly recommend these. I just got a little kit off of uh, Amazon that had a whole bunch of different sizes in it, but it's really, it's really nice. You can put them into all the holes so you don't get paint into all your bolt holes and it makes uh, cleaning afterwards really easy. And these things, uh, since the paint, since they're made out of silicone, the paint just kind of chips off. So then they look, you know, practically brand new again. Highly recommend these. I'm not really gonna go over uh, building the engine. There's plenty of other how-tos, videos, documentations, books, everything about doing that. Additionally, I had the machine shop do the, the bottom end, so it was something that I did not have to worry about. I have done a bottom end once before, but I didn't really want to deal with doing all of the, the measuring and clearances and everything like that. So I just paid the machine shop to do it. So I know it's done right and I don't have to uh, worry about that since I'm not very experienced with doing a bottom end. I've only done it once, as I said, on a previous engine. But, but that is all done. So we will just basically start just bolting everything on. And with the magic of YouTube, we can just go from a bare block to we have an assembled engine for the most part. So let me get this thing swung around here. It is pretty much almost uh, complete. I could drop it in if the car was actually ready. Uh, a few things, I did have to go back and redo the roller rockers because I didn't fully read the instructions and there was a bit in there that says, do not go back and recheck them and retighten them. They will feel loose and that's due to the hydraulic lifter. So I had gone back and I was like, oh, these are loose. So I redid a few of them. Uh, so I had to take everything back apart and redo it correctly. But roller rockers are all done. Uh, I don't like these tall valve covers and not really a fan of chrome. So I'm working on figuring out different ones plus these uh, hit on this alternator. So the previous owner actually cut off the back of the alternator to clear barely. It does actually rub on these valve covers. I do have Fox ones that I tried and it does clear the roller rockers, the 1.6 uh, ratio Scorpion roller rockers on this side, but the baffle hits on this side, which you can then clearance the baffle out. But then the oil fill port will be in the way of the intake. So Fox ones are not gonna work on the SN95s as we already kind of know. And then also it will not clear the, the alternator. That's the, the even bigger problem is how the far forward the valve covers for a Fox one come. So I need to get ones that actually have a ledge and are clearance for an alternator. That's the, that's the big thing is getting the clearance for the alternator. So I'm working on trying to find different valve covers that are lower. And the reason that I want to go lower is if you notice here, there's no distributor. I have a cam sync sensor. So I'm trying to go distributor's ignition uh, using all factory Ford parts. So I'll try to more detail that in a later episode of how I'm doing all that. But for the time being, just know that that is something that I'm working on. So I want to try to put uh, coils on top of the valve covers to reach to the spark plugs. Uh, so in order to do that, I kind of need to have lower valve covers. So I have clearance uh, underneath the intake to, to kind of put those and to get the wires ran and things like that. Uh, if you can see in here, I don't have any Fuel injectors, those are sent out to a local shop to get uh, cleaned and checked to make sure that they are all good to go. I am working on a wiring harness to adapt to the new sensors. So I have a crank position sensor down here from an Explorer. I have a cam sync from an Explorer. So I'm working on do redoing the wiring harness to work with those and then also add in the eight coils uh, 
Dishly oil pan. So I haven't put it on yet because I want them to show. I put in some a uh, little bit of baffles right around this uh, lower sump. So it's just some sheet metal that I cut out and welded up in there. So it's not pretty, but it should work to basically try to keep the oil down in the sump under like the acceleration and braking that kind of happens with uh, autocross. It's not for road racing. Road racing, you'd probably want a bigger sump, but for autocross, which is just a short momentary things, but there's a lot of on and off throttle, I think more than you would see in uh, road racing, but road racing would have higher sustained G's of moving that oil around. So for autocross, I think this should be fine. I did leave enough space to where oil can quickly get back down into there. Uh, I might drill some holes in here maybe additionally to help oil get in there, but this will help keep the oil from exiting this the sump area quickly, but oh, should allow oil to get back down in there. So got the oil pan to put on now. But the main thing is this engine is practically ready to go back into the car. So that means we need to get the other engine out of the car. We'll follow that up in a later episode. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more or got any questions about this engine or any other uh, topics that we got going on, leave them down in the comments. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible, but see you guys in the next video.